Welcome to Grand Prairie Update. I'm Don Johnson. And I'm Terry Briggs. Here's what's happening in your city. This is the time of year America honors the sacrifice and service of the men and women in law enforcement. The law enforcement community is a brotherhood. It's steeped in tradition. A part of that tradition contains a group of unfortunate families that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. In Grand Prairie, the ceremony pays tribute to two fallen officers, Sergeant Gregory L. Hunter, who was killed in 2004, and Patrolman Lyndon King, who died in 1982. We honor and we love their families who are also present today. And we would ask that today we would remember the price that they paid, the honorable lives that they lived, and the heroes in our hearts that they are. Nationwide last year, 111 peace officers died in the line of duty. The total includes 13 from Texas, the most of any state in the country. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Grand Prairie will be moving forward with plans to build a mega recreation center and water park at State Highway 161 and Arkansas Lane. On Saturday, voters gave a thumbs up to a plan to finance the project by extending a sales tax. Officials say the fitness center, water park, outdoor amphitheater, and trail system could open sometime in 2017. I'm so excited. This means so much to the city of Grand Prairie and our future. It's going to provide synergy there for that intersection, that 161 corridor, and I think we'll see development because of it. Voters also returned three incumbents to the city council. In District 1, Georgia Clemson defeated Max Coleman. In District 3, Lila Thorne beat Mike Delboski. And in District 7, Jeff Copeland topped R.J. Delena. The winning candidates are expected to be sworn into office at the May 20th City Council meeting. Grand Prairie um, annexed this big piece of land. Grand Prairie history was the subject of discussion at the main library during a special appearance by Kathy Goolsby who came to sign copies of her new book called A History of Grand Prairie, Pre-1840s to 2009. The book chronicles the transformation of Grand Prairie from the time when nomadic tribes first settled here along the Trinity River, all the way to it becoming the 15th largest city in Texas. It traces the lives of some of its most accomplished citizens and is full of pictures tracing its history over more than a century and a half. It is the second book Goolsby has written about Grand Prairie history. This one, I do it kind of, I write kind of in a narrative style, so I think it's a little easier to read than a lot of history books. But also, um, I, I found all these little tidbits, little newspaper articles, and interesting things um, that I, I was able to include. And, and I, you know, I gave all this to the city, and they laid it out, and those were put in little boxes. So it's not just my writing, but it's, you get the flavor of the time from these little side pieces because it's, it's taken directly from the newspaper or the journal or the letter. And so you see the style people wrote in and the way they talked. Even the newspaper coverage was different. So, so that kind of gives you a, a flavor of the time just by kind of reliving what they, they did back then. If you'd like to get a copy of either book, they are available for purchase at the Main Library, City Hall, and the Grand Prairie Tourist Information Center on North Beltline Road. And whereas Purple Martin, members of the Swallow family are unique to the Western Hemisphere... In a small ceremony at Central Park kicked off a new celebration that is literally for the birds. Two, one. City officials dedicated a new bird sanctuary built specifically for its purple martin population as part of Grand Prairie's first Marty Party. The event was held in conjunction with World Migratory Bird Day to educate and help citizens appreciate the purple martin, the largest species of swallows in North America, which migrate to Mexico and South America in the winter. 
The birds are considered to be both environmentally and people friendly and are especially prevalent in North Texas in the spring and summer. The Marty Party was hosted by the Purple Martin Landlords of North Texas, founded by Gisela Lafrigo, the wife of city councilman and deputy mayor pro tem Richard Frigo. We need the birds, otherwise they, if we don't put up housing, uh, they will go away one day and then we would be really losing them and that would be too sad. So it's education and for nature, that's what I'm for. Frigo says she hopes the Marty Party will become an annual event in Grand Prairie. For more information, visit their website at purplemartinlandlordsofnorthtexas.com. That's it for this edition of Grand Prairie Update. Hope you'll join us again next time.